Cole Palmer scored twice deep into stoppage time to complete his hat trick and earn Chelsea a remarkable win against United last night. Timed at 100 minutes and 39 seconds. Bonkers. It was the latest winner in Premier League history. Ten Hag side was still in front with 99 minutes and 17 seconds on the clock. The latest a side has ever led in a Premier League match before going on to lose. After the game, the United boss was not happy with his side's errors. We started the game uh, good as well, but we make unbelievable and unexpected errors, uh, like the first goal. Uh, that is an unexpected error, and uh, we concede goal. And uh, so, some individual errors make us a bad result. But the team performance uh, was was brilliant. I think we we played outstanding. We we dominated the game, and we had also in offensive. Some fantastic player like Anthony. Dominated the game. Did they dominate the game? Do you know? No, no, no. Game, they, maybe, they, but not dominated the game. They've never got the points in the bag. Like I, I'm getting on my own nerves talking about Man United, and people think I'm being biased, but they need a complete rebuild. They should have done it five years ago. They've left it too late. There's still players there who have failed and failed and failed. I mean, I mean, I said the other day. Fernandez has been there too long. And a Man United fan said to me, well, what do you mean he's been there too long? Brian Robson was at the club 12 years. I said, yeah, because he won something every year. The only way you stay at Man United is if you win something, they get rid of you. But there's players there who have failed on 300 grand a week and they don't know how to get over the winning line. Like, two set plays, really. You know, the two goals. One's from a corner, short corner, and the other one's a penalty. Mm. So you're 3-2 up. Certain rules apply. Full backs do not go forward away at Chelsea when we're 3-2 up. Sit where you are and just feed the ball forward. Don't play out from the back five minutes to go when you're winning. Why? Take the risk. You don't need to score. It's like as if they don't comprehend it, but I have to say, Madawaki going at Darlow is just too good for him. Do you know what, do you know what does my head in as well? If the team who are getting beat, right? And when you're into the last two, three minutes, they still play around at the yeah. back as if at the beckon bar. It's called cool. football snobbery, it's called. And Frightened like, to hit a long ball. Get the ball forward, you tube, you're behind. There's three minutes left. Get it forward. Try and press them. Put them under pressure. Make a mistake. Get a, get a half chance. You're not yeah. going to do it playing football at the back because it looks pretty. You're no. behind. You're getting no points. Make the defenders defend. If you're just playing in front of them all the time, they're just shuffling across the pitch. But they, you know they have this XG which I can't get my yeah, head around. Yeah, yeah. Load of absolute nonsense, expected goals. Yeah. What about, this is what they should have, unexpected mistakes, UM. What about that one? <laughs> so you set your team up, you go through all the shape and everything, and the goalkeeper kicks it against Nunez. Oh, uh, th- unexpected that, uh, mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Who does, mo- who does the, I bet the teams down the bottom do more of them than the teams at the top. I think if Chris had a proper uh, number two goal in the bench, he might have hooked him. That was that was just unacceptable what he's done there. That, there. There is mistakes. You let it through your legs, or you miss. You come for cross, miss it. To do that with loads of time is diabolical. At Anfield, you're at Anfield. You're battling to try and stay in the Premier. It's pouring the rain. Your fans are there, and that tube does that. I I'll swear. guarantee you, Al, that Chris Wilder and Alan Nil have said to the goalkeeper. By the way, Nunez, no pressure. Nunez no pressure. sprints, yeah. and he means it. So. Whatever you do, don't take too long. He'll catch you with the ball. Get rid. It's like playing against Ian Rush. I'm sure the coaches yeah. used to say, don't don't be dallying on the ball, by the way, Ian yeah. Rush. He makes a living out of catching you on the ball. He's quick. Yeah. So, like, it's like as if, do they not watch Match of the Day? <laughs> and watch the players, you know? And, and like, I mean, I don't get it, but... Anyway, we're going to talk to Ali a little bit later. He was on the uh, the gantry last night. What a game it was. Join us now for more on the bridge as the Guardian's Manchester correspondent, Jamie Jackson. Jamie, good morning. Hi, Jamie. Good morning. What a game that was, Jamie. I know if you're from Manchester, especially the red part, you're shaking your head in disbelief, but what a football game. It, it was, and I've got to say the same old story from Manchester United. Dean said that the you know quite rightly they should have rebuilt about five years ago. To be honest, it's been going on since Ferguson left this. I mean it is groundhog day every year with Manchester United. And I, I actually don't think they're any further forward really than sort of when you know Moyes got sacked, say for example, 34 Premier League games into his season, which is what, 10 years ago now, 10, 11 years ago. Um 
I mean, it's amateurish. If you go to Brentford and do what they did there, capitulate, and then, you know, what they did at Stamford Bridge, you know, if my kids' team, you know, my, my son's team does that at the weekend, you're sort of saying, come on now, boys, you know, you've got to learn. And, and these are top professionals. And, you know, I watched it with my son, who is a Manchester United fan, uh, yesterday evening, and he is 12, and he is used to this. And he's sort of almost got this sort of ironical sense of humour about Manchester United that it's always going to happen. And, you know, that says it all, really. And I just, you know, you look at it and you think, Ten Hag is saying we dominated the game and we deserve to win. No, you don't deserve to win if you lose, especially if you lose like that. I mean, yeah. you know, it's just, um, it's almost uh, inevitable. Jamie, to be fair to him, they were much better than they were against um, Brentford. Brentford, I thought they were, it's one of the worst performances I've seen a United side play for a long, long time. They were diabolical, but almost got out of jail and then they throw it away at the end and it's a draw. Uh, you know, but last night they played a lot, lot better, but still come away with nothing. Haven't, but they've conceded 57 shots in two games. That's what Man United have. Brentford in that game last night, 28 and something else against Brentford. Shouldn't be happening really, should it? Something's wrong. If you concede in that many shots at goal. Do you know what I think though, Jamie? You know, like when you sign a player, you got these sporting directors, Ed Woodward, for example. Brian Clough used to make his mind up and Peter Taylor, going back years, managers and Bill Shankly, them type of managers who understood football. They would pick a player, go and watch him, decide they were going to sign him, get him in the hotel, sit in front of him, look him in the eye. And if they didn't like what they were looking at or they said something, to the play, and they thought his character was a bit dodgy. They wouldn't sign him. Yeah. So Man United have signed talent, not character. They need to start signing characters who turn up every week. And when you're in the trenches, it's nil nil away from home. They're going to have a go. So Jamie, how do you see? Are they going to put up a fight against Liverpool? Listen, they've done it in the cup. Can they do it again? Yeah, good question. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean they, they, they beat them in the cup. Um, hair and scare them sort of win. The right end of a sort of four three. I, you know, you just don't know. This is the thing with Manchester United. You're right; they were far better than um, at Brentford, but you don't know whether they're going to, you know, at Chelsea. We don't know whether they're going to dip again on Sunday. I mean, you know, if they'd won yesterday, they'd only be six points behind Spurs and fifth. So Champions League qualification, a bit of a chance. Now the nine behind, you'd have to say that's kind of close to gone. So I just don't know. I'll be at the game on Sunday. It's Liverpool. Yeah, I expect them to play. Well, but whether they they could beat a Liverpool who are sort of you know closing in on the title, I don't know. I, I just don't really see it. But you just don't know with this team. They can pull it out of the bag, but this is the problem. The manager's erratic, and the team is. Am I am yeah, I wrong absolutely. saying they've got the most expensive team? Am I uh, wrong? United, yeah. Uh, they've got the be... wage bill. They have, yeah, yeah. They'd be up. Well, if they're not, if they're not, they're up there. We've got to go to break, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. We have to go sorry. to break. Jamie, sorry, mate. I've, I'm, I'm out of time. Uh, Jamie, enjoy the game. It's going to be a cracker. I'm sure it is. It'll be. Oh dear! I just if United get thumped with Liverpool, and there's every chance as well. You just fear for the manager. You wonder if that's it. Enough's enough. But a big semi final coming up as well against Coventry. So I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't. Man United fans, we want to hear from you this morning. Is it time to move on? Do you still trust the process? You can give us a call 03717 223344. A thanks to Jimmy Jackson. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.